an API means API um, application programming interface. So it's an interface with which you can access databases, also geochemical or so databases. Um, and I will simply show how this works and then I think it will become clear. It takes a second to run, apparently. Maybe we can add, um, I want this to be some text, actually. Okay, let's delete this one. And then we have a nice text. So first of all, we need to import two functions. The first is requests and the second JSON. So this is the function we need to ask for some data from a server, from a web address from a geodatabase or whatever. And JSON is a file format, a dictionary, um, which will be the result of our request. So the first thing we need for request is a URL. The URL is just a web address, which is connected, which then connects to a server on which a database is stored and we can then access this database. So how, does, how do we get an URL and how does it look like? And I will take as an example um, this open weather web page because it has free and open application uh, APIs and the most simple, simplest ones, which is, of course, good as a start. Although the others are not very complicated as well. So then up here we have API. So I click on API and then I go to current weather data. And then I click on API doc for documentation. And this here already is the API. That's basically all we need. That's the URL. As you can see, it's HTTPS and so on. Now there are a couple of orange things here. So there's LUT, this is the latitude, long for the longitude, and then there's something like an API key. I'll come back to the API key later. I'll start with latitude and longitude. So what we need for this API to get weather data from a certain location, we need to put in input the latitude and longitude. That's not that convenient because you would ideally want to put in um, a city name or something like this. And they realize this as well, and therefore they have the, the parameters down here and they um, explain it. And then they have something for geographic coordinates. If you want to have a city, um, we can use another API. And this is the one we will start with. So I click on the geocoding API, and here it is, the geocoding API. Looks similar, just a couple of other parameters to input and here we also have city. So let me copy this. So I click here and copy this URL in here. Maybe I can increase this a little bit, this font size, I guess that's better. Um, so now here we have three parameters, um, which we don't really need at the moment. So state code is, for example, in the US for, for maybe a state, apparently country code, if you know this, um, so we don't need this, I just delete this. We only want to have the city name and I will start here with Frankfurt. Now, importantly, don't put the name in the curly brackets, but also delete the curly brackets. This is just curly brackets, just mean this is the package that needs to be replaced. So we need to be replaced the entire thing here. So put in Frankfurt. Now we have something that is limit here. So if there would be more than one um, city of Frankfurt, then we could limit, maybe 20, we could limit the output to only maybe five cities if when by simply putting inputting here five. Um, let's do this for a moment. Let's put in, well, well, I delete it for the moment. We'll come back to this later. And then this is, so Q means query, and then you query for Frankfurt, and then end um, for the, the app ID, and here we have the API key. Now, if I go there, this URL needs to be a string. So I need to put this as a string. That's important. And then let's go to the API key. So this is basically a, a sort of a password. And here on this web page, you can get these passwords. <clears throat> um, for this, you would need to make an account. It's free. If you want to, if you want to test it, it's not necessary. So I have an account here. I have something that's called my API keys. 
that's my API key. You should not share this. So this is why I will delete this key after or deactivate it and delete it after I make this video. For now, I copy it. And again, I replace the entire thing, so including the curly brackets. So I put in the API key here. And then I'm done. So if I run it, of course, for, for Python itself, this is just a, so if I check this, that's just a string. So it, uh, Python, of course, doesn't recognize this as an address. It just reads a string. This is why we have the requests. And I will do such a request now. And I assign the result to the variable R, which is often used for response. And then I make the requests. And I make a get request. And then I put in the URL here. And um, let's let's call this city, this URL, URL city. It will, because we later need another URL, that's why I give it some name. So I run it, and of course I would need, um, repair, or oh, didn't I run this? Requests. Yeah, okay, I forgot to, to run the import, which of course then doesn't do. Now response is 200. That's fine. Response 200 means everything worked well. You likely know the um, page not found error 404. This is basically, if I would not find this, maybe I could maybe I could actually do this. I'm just changing this. Now it's because I'm not going to the web page itself. I need to find the, at least the URL, and then it would tell me whether there's a, a the specific web, web page I'm looking for. And on this web page, somewhere, there's an explanation with all these error messages, mean these error numbers, there are a couple of them. Okay, so I got a response. Now, how does this look like? And for this, I use now the JSON format. They are different. You can not only use JSON, but something like text, and so then they get different kind of, the, the results will be displayed in a different way. We want to have a JSON response, which is a dictionary. Now, this is the response here. This is what we got from the server. Now, in this particular case, it's a little bit different than usual because now we have um, the square brackets here and then the dictionary starts with the curly brackets. Now, why do we have the square brackets? This is the case because, remember, we had this limit here. And um, so we could have more than one Frankfurt. At the moment, it's just one because we didn't put in any limit then it automatically defaults to basically limit one. But if I now put in limit equals 10, 10, and because this is an additional one, so there's an and limit and, and then the app ID, and then I run it, I get a couple more Frankfurt. So this is the first one. Um, stop, so this is the one in, in Hessen, in, that's a country code here, DE. Then there's Frankfurt Oder uh, in Brandenburg, state, it's still in Germany, then in, in Slupich, for whatever reason, that also seems to be some Frankfurt. There's a Frankfurt again in Bavaria, and then there's a Frankfurt in maybe Zambia, I don't know what ZA is, in Pumalanga state. So this is the limit. We don't need this. First one is Frankfurt am Main, which is here. Um, so I, I delete this for, for the moment and run it again. Now, but because we have this record, so we want to have the first element here, which is um, square brackets for extracting something and zero for the first element, run it. And now we have, we start with the curly brackets and we have the first element here. Now, what we wanted was from this here, from this city, but it's actually not, it doesn't matter. It's the, long, the latitude and the longitude. Um, so to, I call this result. So to get the, from a dictionary, a specific entry, we need to uh, use the key. This is the key to extract, and then there's latitude, and I run it. And again, 15.11, that's in degrees, of course. And I can do the same for longitude, and then I get the longitude of Frankfurt. Fine, and remember, we all, um, getting this from a server, which is really quite neat. So now we can go back with the latitude and the longitude to our weather API 
and actually get a weather for Frankfurt. Now this is the weather API, remember, this is latitude and longitude, and here we get the weather data, so I copy it. And um, so let me make a new cell for the moment. And this is URL, and I'm calling this now weather. And this needs to be a string. And I put this. So I need the API key, so it's the same as above, because I'm asking the same server. So it's the IP. Now here's latitude and longitude. What I can do is I can simply copy this and input here uh, for this. And again, don't forget to replace also the curly bracket. So that's latitude. And here we have longitude. And then I run this. And um, I'm getting already some problem here. Invalid syntax. Now what's the problem? The problem is this entire thing here is a string. Now this particular bit here is a, a number, so I cannot put in a number here, so this just doesn't work. So I actually need to do it, I need to convert this into a string. So I'm doing this by with the function str, and then this entire thing becomes a string. You can see there's already the quotation mark here. So this is what I need to do here. I need to replace this with a string. But I'm still not done here because I cannot, if I have a string that looks like this, hello, and then there's something like that, this doesn't work. Because actually these are two strings. So the hello is a string and this part is a string. So if I want to put these together, I can simply do this by using a plus sign and now I have one string, and if I want to have a space in between here, uh, I would need to look something like this. All right, so I need to plus this in, basically. So I'm... Um, oops. So I'm... Why is this... No. Now I make this... Is, this is one string with the quotation marks. Um, plus, and then this is a string. Plus, and then it's the next string, so I use a slight trick here. So I mark this and then I push the quotation mark button. And then this is basically put in the quotation marks, but what actually will happen is that this first one ends the, this string, and the second one starts this string. So that's just a small, small trick. And then again, a plus here, and now I have one string. Right? Um, oh. This is not a string yet. Now it's a string. Now this should work. Okay. So we have a, a string for this URL here. Fine. Now we actually want to make a request with this second API. So I make R again and I call this R now weather so to differentiate from the first one. And then requests get and curly brackets around this. And let's, and then we want to have um, from this a JSON file. And then we don't need, I just run it. Type error, what did I do? Uh, I put in zero, which is nonsense. Okay. So here we have, we, we required this um, extract zero because this was a list we got here, if you remember this. Now we don't get a list, so we don't need to extract the first element here because this is already the single JSON file we want, and this is actually our weather data. Um, so you can, if you want, just copy all in one cell now. Let me do this and run it. So what's happening now, we have this URL. We request here for the city um, latitude and longitude. We get the JSON file, then we have this result here. From this result, which is the JSON file of Frankfurt, we extract the longitude and latitude. Um, actually, that's, I just see that should be latitude. Otherwise, I don't know what we are getting here. 
um, latitude and longitude because now you know, it's the same. So now this should be Frankfurt. Yeah. Looks better. It's now also um, recognizing this as Frankfurt. Before it gave some different name. Um, apparently there was a city. I have the same. Um, because now for long, um, this will both be this 8.1 longitude here. It's funny. Okay. Um, now that's Frankfurt. Great. Fantastic. So we got our result here. Let's put this into um, result. Let's call this weather variable. Oops, that was the wrong button. Equals. Right. Okay. And now from this, we want to take some, for example, temperature. Again, this is a dictionary to get uh, something from a dictionary. We need to put in the key. So the key is main. So main. So we get then this one. Um, if you look here, this is a nested dictionary. So this is main and then there's another dictionary following which, and the smaller one you can see if we extract it so we need to do this again and then temp and we have the temperature now this is in fahrenheit uh, in kelvin so we need to subtract 273 and then this is the temperature in degrees celsius so this is temperature which is nice and the same we can do, for example, for wind speed, wind speed. And then we have a look. It's again a nested, so wind, and then this is again nested, so I can leave it as this, wind speed, but of course not subtracting 273. And then we have the wind speed 1.54. So that's likely, I think, in meters per second, but this is all documented on the back page. And then let's take the last one, maybe description. Um, so description, description. And here we need to take weather. And then for whatever reason, this is a list. And there's just one element in the list, so that's a bit odd, but I don't know. Um, I don't want the first element, so we, let, let's just show it here, weather. Description, okay, some spelling mistake here. So now it should work. What's the problem here? Oh, that was a bit stupid. Um, of course, this needs to be here, and then this needs to be in the brackets, uh, weather. Yeah, because I need to take from this entire dictionary here the weather key. So we get this. Now this is a square bracket and then want the first element. Then I get this dictionary and from this dictionary I want then the description. So here now is description. And then I get light rain. So fine. So this is this now is the description. So from this, I could make a list with temperature, wind speed, wind speed, and description, difficult word. And I have it all in one. And of course, if I want to, I could round this again, right, to maybe one digit or so. I could add uh, then, of course, units. And so on. I can also make a pandas data frame out of this if I also import pandas here, import pandas as pd, run it, and then make a data frame out of this. So pd data frame. In. And I have a data frame. And then you can imagine I could make a loop out of this and get um, these results here for number of cities and could then 
quickly change the cities or even have uh, all the cities here or whatever. Um, let's just make the first step here, make a definition out of this. Um, so first of all, I would so put in here, again, make this trick, put this in, make the quotation mark and then write in here city and have the city up here equals Frankfurt, Frankfurt. And then this works again because I, this city is a string. So I, this is now here's this string Frankfurt and I, with the plus signs, I make one single string out of this. So that's fine. And if I want to make a definition here, so maybe weather in city, and then in the, this is the argument into this definition. So I need to indent all of this. And then let's just see whether this is working. So I'll put in here Frankfurt. And I get results. Um, well, I just get this, this bit here basically, but I could then run this and then it's working. And I could, if I want to get this table, I can add this to the um, the definition here, this needs to be indented then, then the result is no longer this part here, but this data frames I need to return. I think I forgot to put in return before that was one of the reasons it was displayed. Now I put in the return, then I should get the data frame. So maybe just to show this a little bit, so in one cell, just the definition and then here Frankfurt, file, and if you get put in. Darmstadt, Darmstadt, or Mainz, or Bern. Not very nice in Europe at the moment, but if you want to be sure this is working, put in Tokyo. Or, so it's very different, quite hot in Tokyo, very hot in Tokyo, oh God. Um, or Athens, I'm not sure it's Athens or Athens. It's also quite hard. So this is how it works. Um, and of course, if a geodatabase has something like this, you can do exactly the same. And basically every weather day app on your phone is working exactly this way. So this is what you can do with a very few lines of code using application programming interfaces.